With the idea of poverty, um, we can say that there's a lack. So, for example, if the adrenals have to keep go, 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 keep getting more, but they're not ever given a chance to actually maintain some element of arriving into the moment, which means that there's nothing to do, just be. It's kind of like when you have prisoners earning just enough for their efforts to eat, and then they don't have any energy to get out of this constant cycle. And then you have, you know, for example, in the Jewish history, not being allowed to own property, um, and then not being able to earn credit to be able to get all the benefits of being a voter, someone who has property and so on, but also being the scapegoat for the ones who have all the money, but really they're managing other people's money with their blessings. And, um, you know, also in other history, like if you look at um, some, some areas where credit um, for buying property in the United States was, they said literally like in Detroit, black neighborhood, white neighborhood, A to C, how much credit you have based on the color was, for white and then you got D credit automatically if you lived in an area that was black so there is this element of like the adrenal glands of go 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 can only manage when there's enough to like make more <clears throat> and so poverty is like this idea that a tool can separate the thread from the fabric so we're all connected to this fabric of life and it's like there's a tool that says you're you're not able to be as worthy or you can't handle it as much or you know, the more life will go to that one. And it just, uh, it's uncertainty in living situation. And this is not always so easy, but we've got to separate from the humility and the humiliation. So it may feel that we're like being separated from the source of the fabric. And, um, you know, sensitively speaking with, with greater responsibility is a way to listen to that physical pain that humiliation feels like might hang our head, we might feel the gravity of the world, and we might realize that we do need to make some changes. We might be living to die, live to work, and our livelihood is in a state of poverty. We're just earning enough, like in those prison systems, or we might be putting ourselves into these areas where we're judged that we're not enough, like in the credit situation I spoke about or in property ownership I spoke about. So it's like, for example, if you were black at that time and you were, you were trying to, you had such high interest rate that you could barely pay. <clears throat> it wasn't available to most people. It was like they could be separated from the threat of all. And also like in the situations with the Jewish people who couldn't own property and had to manage other people's money and there was such high taxes that let's say they made thousands of dollars, they got six or seven dollars of it. And yet we're blamed for having all this money and not sharing. And so it's like being put in situations when where there's uncertainty and feeling humiliated in some way because of not being able to handle the humble beginnings of not knowing like when you're a baby and you started eating and breathing and, and being taken care of and now if you looked at your parents would you trust them to do everything right I don't know you know hopefully you you can if you don't have your parents you can still you know in the physical world you can still remember some elements of them and if not you can look at other people's parents and think would you trust these people to raise you from scratch as a baby so we do have to make some peace with uncertainty in our living situation that doesn't feel like humiliation and like I said, this physical pain, we listen as heaven and earth. We listen as the thread, but also the fabric. We listen as, is this right for everyone? Would everyone benefit? And also, do I benefit as the earth? Like, receiving, and, and the valley informs the mountain. Like, the valley, um, the valley says, you're giving me such good water at the top of the mountain. And the mountain says, are, are things working out down there? Like, is life working? Like, they do need to communicate. It's not because one is above or below is better or worse. Gravity assists with the water coming down the mountain. And, um, and through this physical pain that we might feel from the adrenals or from poverty or from emptiness in the relationships or too much fullness, <clears throat> we can see where we have selective hearing, where we haven't been listening to the parts of us that are telling us we're living like a prisoner, just enough to get by, but not actually to catch up with ourselves. And so some, some ways to look at this is, you know, looking at those close to us who have other insecurities, whether it's in their health or their living situation, and we have to let this energy of certainty into the heart that everything's the way it's supposed to be. It's the alpha energy. We have to let the alpha energy of life, this, this fight or flight energy, this rest and digest energy, it's all alpha energy from the beginning. And we have to let it into the heart. And this alpha energy we could call God and say, we're promised <clears throat> that in listening, we will feel heard. In listening, living deeply, listening, we will feel heard. So if we start to listen to the people around us saying, this isn't how to live, 
you know, these people are being persecuted, these ones are being oppressed, we will actually start to feel heard, we'll start to value ourselves more, we'll trust the timing, there's no rush that's justified, we start to slow down and say, look, I want to have the dream happen already, but I'm going to start to recognize and see maybe there's a reason it's not happening for me, I'm going to feel secure even though I'm being repaired or polished and I'm not like completed yet and I'm not totally refined yet, I'm going to allow the wobbles to be a sign of strengthening, I'm not going to look at it like, you know, I have to be the top ballerina ready if I'm just learning how to do plie. I'm going to respect my own voice and my own silence more. This is a creative power I have and I'm going to use it more wisely. This is how we get life. Actually, certain things we say bring us life and certain things we say don't bring us life. With all sounds, for example, someone honking like that. Perfect timing. They're in such a rush. It's not going to help anything. And I don't have to rush for them to end. I could learn from this. It's like not respecting their own horn. As they push their horn like this, they're showing they do not respect their own horn. Because if it was so powerful, just one press would help. They don't respect whoever they're signaling to. The fabric of life is forever unfolding. This is part of it. It's a dream that all of us are having together and we have to make it a good dream. For example, I could be really grateful that I get like exhibit A as I'm sharing. It's almost like a presentation where life is helping. So that's the fabric of life. There's no thread that could be separated. The very groups that were in oppression over a long period of time, and there's no rush. These very periods have become um, majorities or in positions of power. This has happened on and off in many areas of history and location. Parts fall away. We don't have to protect the part. And this is like an example of every month, the moon, when it's moving from right to left, filling up, it's called waxing. Then it's about halfway full. Then it fills up from the middle to the left, and it's called waning. Sorry, then it, when it starts emptying from the right to the left, and it's filled up from the left and emptying in, it's called waning. So every month, there's a renewed moon, and every month there's a new egg that a woman will release if she's menstruating on a regular cycle. And we don't mourn these parts. It's like in a huge family when a child dies, you might say like the reason that sometimes you never get over it, but there's a reason that sometimes they keep going is because there's so many parts of life happening all at the same time. And each one gets to remember this one that's missing. So it's not like there's less love for the one that's missing. It's that there's so much love from everybody who mourns them. And yet there's enough new life happening, people having new children, new neighbors, new jobs, that this one, the pain is not felt in the same way as if there's an only child. And so when we start to live that way, that like the crowdedness or the isolation um, from being amongst many people, we can release from the womb. The, the lower part of the heart is the womb, the lower part of the heart. And, and the, up, the upper part of the heart is like what we talk about as the heart. But there's the back part of the heart too, which is like the spine, which is the bedrock of giving and getting. And it's the life force that we all share. And when we share our resources, we're sharing our life force. And when we share our attention, we're sharing our life force. And when we're, you know, providing a service for a job, we share our life force. We're actually coming from the heart. We're sharing the back of the heart when we have enough to give, like from a place of abundance, I'm certain. Certain is the back of the heart. And then when there's the element of letting go of the part without grieving the part and being the whole, that's the lower part of the heart. That's the womb. And then, and even with a man, you can access this energy. Um, when I say a man, I mean if you have a womb or not. And um, I can't buy into all this progressive talk of he, she, they, them. I mean, I'm just speaking now very specifically about the energy of the womb. And then the upper part of the heart is the part that we're familiar with, which is the radiating. So if there's a backbone, we can open. If there's something that's letting things go, we can open. Now, during the morning, we're not supposed to, during the grieving of the egg, during that week of oldness, we're not supposed to be having sex, having new life energy come in. We're not supposed to be taking on many new projects. We're not supposed to be exercising and getting a lot of life force from the adrenals. That's the time where we trust the signs and the symbols to tell us about and the duration of how long it's going on of the relationship to let it teach me the patterns and the rules so that's the part where we trust the process and we sit back and we can learn everything all the signs and symbols start to happen things take certain amounts of time and we get all the insights if we actually recognize this natural cycle of life 
and, and endings. And we can um, then move to our reinvestments or checking the profits, kind of seeing where we ended up. Do I feel respected and valued? Do I feel productive? Do I feel connected? Do I feel full but also have space for newness? And um, do I feel like the letters of speech I'm using are divine and holy? I'm speaking in a way that has integrity and I love how I do things. And this time is we get to see, well, maybe I've been rebellious or disobedient and a way of not listening to what's hurting me. And that's what I've been talking about, listening. So this wise livelihood is this listening to get this information. And then when we actually get it, we recognize this is what connects our thread to the source of life. This is part of my livelihood portion. This is going to keep me alive. This information of not doing, of not always trying to control and rush life, but actually like being alive. And then um, I'm going to do what I talked about my confession practice, where I talk about like money is like credit. So my own credibility, this is all personal. So this is something where I'm looking at where was I not wise in my own credibility to myself, to trust myself in, in earning my own life, earning my livelihood. And it says we do have to work by the sweat of our brow. So... I invested everything into failed businesses and was then afraid to start again. I looked for excuses why I'm unemployed. For example, I had a bad boss or corona, physical pain. Instead of um, recognizing that I had been overcompensating in my jobs, I became burnt out. I had poor work-life boundaries. And I wasn't feeling like I had much of a choice. Um, like I always have to be a laborer or servant. And I would lose myself to selfish and entitled people. And in my own selfishness and entitlement, I would also like think everything revolved around me at the office or in the um, customer-provider relationship. I had low self-esteem, so I was taking rejection too personally. I forgot. I'm not even advertising myself. I'm advertising a service or a product. And I was feeling too capable. Like, everyone else could do it. Like, like there's so many things I could do, but like everyone could do it. If anyone tries, they could learn how to do this skill. And so I didn't feel special enough or I didn't build my own credibility enough to actually offer some of these things, like being a life coach could have been a path of mine. Um, I'm an artist and I do body work, um, and I, but I was a photographer and I, would, I was doing meditation coaching and I was doing astrology reading, like um, Kabbalistic astrologies. So it's like I really delved very deep into many areas, but I never actually turned it into anything. And so I didn't build up my own credibility because I was so busy to tell myself anyone could do it. But the truth is I didn't see if I had something special to offer in some of these areas. And I'm still learning about my artistry and my bodywork skills. And so hopefully I keep building that kind of credit. And um, like I said, the relationships is, is uh... then there's um, feeling finally feeling unimpressed and unaccomplished because I was taking too much of my adequacy of myself from the work I was doing. And it was never perfect, perfect of the standards I kept coming up with. I was looking for that false security. You know, I wasn't able to make wobbles, wasn't able to make changes. I wasn't able to do all those things I talked about. I was living in a poverty mindset. I was not respecting my own voice in silence. I was feeling insecure during the repair and the polishings and the refinings. I wasn't allowing wobbles to be a sign of strength. And I um, didn't really feel satisfied in myself. So you know, when there's no more work to focus on or make efforts in, I felt kind of empty. And I would feel like, I, you know, I would seek the appreciation and, and belonging over the money. So I was making bad decisions. I was, you know, not trusting the signs or the symbols. I was like chasing things down and I would rush things and I wasn't trusting letting things go. I was trying to hold everything in the heart, but I wasn't going into the back of the heart. I was just trying to keep opening my heart, but kept getting hurt because I was um, looking for the wrong things in the wrong places. And I ended up neglecting my responsibilities and opportunities because of this. So I hope that um, you will find some sense of lasting security um, for the self, which comes from undivided attention and relating to livelihood. And uh, may the space and the time of presence heal the separation of, of being, of, of, of earner and earned and, and what's earned. And uh, how do I say this? The earner and earning and the earned. All of that. Be well.